Hey, just want to describe something to you real quick. Um, you see how I'm all kitted out, ready for a day of work? I want to show you what time it is. I'm still home. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Kenny, why are you lazing about? Why aren't you putting in a good, honest day's work? Well, I want to show you. No, stay You see those things right there? See this? You see, you see those things right there? You see this? Well, that is how the day started. All right, we are heading to the job site right now. It's two in the afternoon. My dad had the spare key. Property is just around the corner, but the problem is, is all the tools that I had were in the other truck with all the keys locked in. And the key into the unit was also in the truck as well. So just a bloody gong show at that. So the plan now is we're gonna go in there at two in the afternoon and pretend it's like nine o'clock in the morning and we're starting our first job. I don't wanna hear any crap from any of you. We're gonna give it our best and we're gonna open up this cement. All right, here we are in this dungeon of an area, but this is gonna be the workspace, and I'm really excited for what's going on. We got some juicy, delicious plumbing coming your way. Check this out. This rag right here is actually a floor drain, and you gotta trust me for now. I'll be able to show you a little bit later, but this floor drain, which is a P-trap, is broken. The trap is broken. There is no seal. That's why the rag is there in there currently. We came in to snake this drain because it was clogging, but what we ended up realizing is the trap was broken, and we think it's a cast iron trap so we told the owner listen this is a major issue the owner is hoping to be renting out these units but the problem is is there's sewage gas coming in here it's really unsafe and unhealthy for the people living in the area so right away he was game he was like listen let's get it done as soon as possible and that's why we're here here's the game plan we have to replace this trap put in a new floor drain but they also need a laundry tub. This is brand new. It is not secured. It is totally free floating right now. We're gonna be running a drain from the floor drain to this tub as well, because if you look at the drain behind it, which serves the clothes washer, it is monstrously high. We would have to lift this unit significantly upwards in order to make this work, which is a little bit of an awkward situation. So instead, we priced the job to break a trench all the way here, bring a pipe up. We'll be wet venting the two fixtures, the floor drain, and also this drain right here. Bring up an air admittance valve to make it all work, and we're good to go. Phase for today is we're gonna start the braking, have everything cleaned out and put in the appropriate spot. What I'm talking about is the dirt and the rock. And then tomorrow, we'll be able to come in, throw down that pipe, make sure it's good and up to code. We also have to put in a floor drain primer. I forgot to mention, anytime you have a floor drain, you need a floor drain primer, and we're also using this as a floor drain primer station. We're gonna have a special faucet that that has a primer connection so that every time somebody turns this on, a little trickle of water goes into the new floor drain that we're putting in. Like I told you, a bunch of juicy things coming your way. Let's go do some delicious plumbing. So peeps, it's demolition time, which is phase one. Keep in mind, we're always prepping for the environment we're in. So currently we're in an enclosed space, so the acoustics of the room will make the breaking noises bounce back rapidly for our ears. Also, the dust that gets kicked up will be lingering as well. So we have to make sure we are prepared for all those variables before we start. If we were outside, for example, the acoustics would be a little bit less severe and less harsh for our ears. So that's why you're going to see me grab respirators and earplugs especially because our lungs and ears will be taking on more dangerous activities than we want them to. What we just realized is, if you look inside, if you look inside the drain, you see that it's cracked there and that there's no trap seal, basically. There's no water at the bottom of this floor drain, but turns out to be a 90. It doesn't even look like it's an actual floor drain to begin with. So whoever roughed this in just brought a 90 up, which means that sewage gas has the opportunity to come in. I don't know. Maybe there's a pea trap somewhere further along. Either way, we're gonna keep exploring, figure this out.
Alrighty, so did a bunch of trenching. Take a look. This is where the drain is going to come for the laundry tub. We are going to have to put a floor drain connection somewhere in here. This is where the current connection is. And like I was saying to you, this isn't even a floor drain. It's just a 90 degree elbow, which is carrying no trap seal whatsoever, which means sewage gases have the opportunity to get back in. So we're going to be connecting a 45. We'll Y into the floor drain and then we'll continue on and run some pipe for the laundry tub as well. Let's pop into the studio really quickly. I just want to show you what we're going to size it at so that you understand the codes and also the theory that I'm using behind this engineering right here. Let's go. So peeps, now that we're in the studio, I just wanted to walk you through what exactly our game plan is and why we're going through it this way. So if you take a look at my drawing right here, what you'll see is we have a building that comes across, we have a footing next to it, we have a stack that comes up and it picks up multiple floors that go up. And then as we get down into the basement, what I drew here is a 90 degree elbow. So this is a very large cast iron 90 that they put underneath. It goes in just like so and connects into the drain that's going out to the sewer out. Outside. So to reiterate our issue here is that first of all there was a clog somewhere and water seemed to be backing out of this 90. Second of all a 90 is an inappropriate fitting to be putting down here because what you're supposed to do for a floor drain is put in a P-trap. A P-trap is designed to keep sewage gases from coming back into the house so because there's no P-trap present sewage gas has the opportunity to come in at any point of any day anytime and sewage gas is very dangerous to our health. So what we're opting to do is get rid of this get rid of that and take the entire thing out and what we want to do is get a floor drain to come in just like so and connect into the sanitary pipe that's going to go outside to the sewer and then later on the sewage treatment plant and on that where the vent is supposed to be we're going to be creating a wet vent what that means is is we're going to have a drainage pipe that also acts as a venting pipe and vice versa a venting pipe that also works as a drainage pipe so we're gonna hit a y we're gonna come across with this Y. It's gonna continue on. We're gonna hit a 90 up. And then we're gonna install two things. We're gonna have the laundry tub like so here. And the laundry tub will have its own designated P-trap of course, which comes in like so and connects in. And the vertical portion of this P-trap is gonna become a vent and we're gonna connect that in and it's gonna be an air admittance valve essentially. So the pipe that's acting as the wet vent is this pipe right here. Normally, this pipe is just a venting pipe for the floor drain. However, in this case, it's also going to be simultaneously a drainage pipe for the laundry tub. What you're gonna notice is, is if you discharge the laundry tub, it's gonna go into the P-trap, it's gonna hit this sanitary connection, it's gonna continue on this drainage and this venting, it's gonna come in here and it's also gonna travel in the last section the same way the floor drain travels into the main that goes outside to the sewer. Now, in order to allow wet venting to take place, we have to size wet vents accordingly. What we're supposed to do by code is have 65% capacity of the pipe at maximum filled. So in other words, if all the fixtures are draining simultaneously, we are not allowed to surpass 65% full of that pipe. If it goes to 70%, if that pipe, if everything discharges and that pipe raises to 70% full, all of a sudden we understand that drainage is gonna start becoming an issue, so we're gonna have to upsize that pipe. That's the way the code book works. When you get the code book and it teaches you to size, you size accordingly, according to the amount of fixtures and fixture units to ensure that 65% of the pipe is gonna be full at maximum capacity. So in order to do wet venting, what we have to do is size accordingly. So what we have to do here is get our wet venting chart, which looks just like so. On a wet vent, you got a couple of things here. The first thing is you gotta find out your hydraulic load of all your fixtures. All our fixtures is we have a two inch floor drain, which is gonna be two fixture units, and we're also gonna have a 1.5 fixture unit or inch and a half trap for our laundry tub. So if we look at this chart right here, which is 7581, it's gonna explain some of the stipulations when you're sizing a wet vent, which is this. Number two, when determining the size of a wet vent, the hydraulic load from the most downstream fixture or symmetrically connected fixture shall not be included. So in other words, in this situation, the two inch floor drain is not gonna be included when you're sizing the wet vent, okay? So we're working with only 1.5 fixture units. So we have column one, column two, column three, size of a wet vent, and this one is not 
not serving water closets. We don't have any water closets in this wet vented group, okay? So for an inch and a half pipe, we're allowed a total hydraulic load of two fixture units. In other words, our inch and a half pipe is able to serve 1.5 fixture units in a wet vent. So it's pretty simple. We're gonna size the wet vent at inch and a half, even though the floor drain is two inch. Once it gets to the two inch, it remains two inch to, to continue down. Let me show you what that looks like here. If this wasn't a wet vent, what we would have opted to do is run this vent upwards through the floor up to open air. And then we would have connected this directly into the sanitary pipe just like so. But we are now getting multiple fittings that aren't necessary. So by wet venting, we're reducing the amount of fittings because I need to get a four by four by inch and a half Y there and a four by four by two inch Y here. So in order to get rid of that option altogether, we don't have to get a four by four by inch and a half. What we can do is connect into the floor drain and by connecting and sizing it correctly, we reduce the amount of pipes we need and also vents we need. So it's cost effective for both the plumber and also the homeowner. So we're, we're gonna do is connect in here with this Y and this acts as a vent again and also acts as a drain. So we're gonna size this trap and also this drainage pipe at inch and a half and this floor drain is gonna be sized at two inch and basically the inch and a half will go into the two inch. Once it gets into the two inch, it will continue two inch until it hits the main and that main will be four inches on the way out. I hope I was able to explain wet venting to you. It is a cost effective way of being able to size pipe and put them together. You just have to make sure that you use the appropriate chart when sizing. That way you ensure again that you're only running at around 65% full when all the fixtures are discharging at the same time. That's the game plan of wet venting and actually all drainage altogether. You never want it to exceed 65%. If it does, that pipe size is too low. I hope this was clear to you and let's get back to the rest of the vlog. Right here is our snap cutter. This is not a peach wrap. So peeps, you're gonna notice that we decide to use the grinder to cut our cast iron pipe immediately after we use the snap cutters, which are designed for that exact same purpose. The reason we exercise this decision is because upon snapping the pipe, we realize that it is brittle and it starts cracking. So we don't end up with a good edge to put a Fernco onto. And also, if we were to try snapping the pipe again at a further distance, it would most likely react the exact same way. So we introduce the grinder to take away the strain the pipe will have when using the snap cutter. Alrighty, so let me show you where we're at. Uh, first phase is, is over. Here's what we're seeing right here. Trench goes all the way here. We're going to be bringing it up. We're going to be securing the air admittance valve to this piece of wood right here. And we're also going to be connecting our TY for our laundry tub. But if you follow the trench along, we found this copper pipe. We're not sure exactly what it is. We're under the impression that it's obsolete, but we're not going to touch it just in case it's not obsolete. We're gonna go underneath it tomorrow when we do the connection. So over here, we're gonna have a two inch floor drain, which is gonna be a two inch peach wrap. This is gonna have a primer connected into it. It's gonna wrap along the pipe and go up the wall. 45, we're gonna do a couple of Y's to make that happen. But this is a two inch pipe. It's just the wall thickness of it was quite significant. So we thought it was three inch at first, but it's two inch and we're gonna to have to transition from two inch cast to two inch ABS to let this thing happen. We're about to go cap that, clean up a little bit more and we're gonna to get to tomorrow right about now. We're back, day two. We got our materials right there. We got ourselves a two inch and an inch and a half pipe. The inch and a half pipe is sitting inside this two inch right here. We're going to be connecting in there and we're gonna be running all of our pipe through these trenches. Got myself a steep T, meaning I'm putting on my game face as we speak. I'm gonna have that real quick and it's game on. Let's go do some delicious plumbing.
So peeps, the name of this game becomes Patience and Precision. Working on underground drainage is always challenging because you cannot in most cases get a visual representation of if a pipe has appropriate slope. You see, when a pipe is at eye level, your eye in most circumstances will be able to tell if you have appropriate pitch. But with underground drainage, the pipe is under eye level, so it becomes most challenging. Your level is your partner in crime in these circumstances because the level becomes your eyes. It guides you the entire way. So keep it close and keep it safe and make sure the edge of the level is clean of any debris that can render it useless. So peeps, another thing you're gonna notice is that the trench is an approximate depth for the time being. We are constantly tweaking its slope and depth depending on what fitting or pipe we're gonna be laying down on it. So when the floor drain or P-trap is introduced, we have to dig significantly to make sure that we can accommodate it. So we go deeper than we did for any other fitting and any other pipe. When we lay a pipe down, we have to check its slope from front, middle to end because certain areas might be higher and lower depending on the trench. So we're always tweaking and we're always checking and this is a constant process until the job is done. wasn't able to get it on camera but we essentially put in our primer connection that is this white tubing that's coming all the way here and comes inside so what this basically is is you got to drill into the vertical pipe coming up you got to shove this in and then you silicone around it if there is a bit of a snag it stays inserted into here and this will eventually connect to a faucet basically so every time that faucet runs a little bit of water will trickle all the way through and this raise up the pipe prime the pipe a little bit more of its trap seal so let's talk about what's going on here first things first we're connected into the old cast iron come up hit a 45 this is a two inch pipe over here this is a two by two by two y we continue two inch to the floor drain right here right here is the vent for the floor drain okay that's what this is this is called a wet vent system so even though it's a two by two by two y we put an inch and a half bushing in there which converts it from two inch to inch and a half and we have an inch and a half running up hitting a 45 and going all the way down there hitting another 90 and coming up vertically this is the wet vent this is the wet vent portion, and it's going to go all the way up to here, where we're gonna put in an air admittance valve to allow correct venting. And the reason why we're allowed to get away with inch and a half is because we're not counting the lower fixture. Whenever you have a wet vented group, the lowest fixture is not counted, and thus, we have only 1.5 fixture units for the laundry tub itself. The two inch floor drain is not counted in a wet vented group because it's the lowest fixture. Okay, I hope that made sense. Peeps, quite an extensive job. We still have to do some backfilling now. We gotta compact it, we gotta throw some water on it, let it settle for about 24 hours. We're gonna come back, we're gonna cement this bad boy. Thanks for watching, like, subscribe, comment below, and I'll see you plumbers very soon. Kenny Molotov, guys, peace.